Steps to hiring your first employee. Steve Hansen here, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. Well, you know, there will be a time that we all will decide to hire our first employee. And, uh, you know, sure, it can be scary. But, uh, you know, if you go ahead and take the time and create a list of the steps that you have to take, uh, it's, it's less daunting and less scary. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so, number one, you got to get your EIN number. Um, that's very, very important. Uh, it's also known as your federal tax ID number. So that'd be your first step. Uh, your second step would be to register with your state's labor department. Now, you'll, you'll be required to pay uh, state unemployment taxes and, uh, you know, and some other uh, taxes to also. So you got to register with your state's labor department. Number three is that you have to uh, set up your workers' compensation insurance. So now it's going to vary from state to state. Uh, some uh, states you're exempt depending on how many employees you have. But here's something I want you to think about is that when one of your employees gets hurt on the job and you don't have workman's comp, who do you think they're going to come after to pay the medical bills? That's right, you. So I always advise people to, even though your state may not require you to have workman's comp, maybe you should get it um, because it's, uh, it's going to save you in the pocketbook. So anyway, you may think it's costing you a lot of money to have workman's comp, but what's it costing you if you don't have it and uh, an employee gets injured on the job and there's, uh, you know, there's medical time in the hospital or whatever it may be? Boy, you'd have wished you got your workman's comp then. Okay? So step number four is uh, you need to choose a payroll system and you know familiarize yourself with the employment's uh, employer uh, tax withholdings. So you know and that can be kind of daunting too. But you know today there's so many different payroll systems that you can select from, uh, and there's a lot of information uh, you know out on the internet how to set it all up. You know so again because you know you're going to be responsible for withholding a portion of uh, your employee's income. You know, for Social Security and, and for uh, Medicare, you know, those are all tax payments that you have to pay. So uh, that's why you're you're going to need to uh, you know set up a payroll system. And uh, number five is uh, you know you got to write a job description. Now I tell you, I've talked to many cleaning uh, business owners, and it's it's interesting how many do not have a job description. Here they've hired an employee, or they may have uh, four or five employees and may have been in business for uh, a couple of years, but yet they don't have a job description uh, for the positions that they have for their business. So very important, you know, before you hire any employees, make sure you write the job description for it. And again, uh, you know, on the janitorial store in my house cleaning biz, we have that all in our download library. You know, why recreate the wheel or spend hours on trying to figure out how to write a job description for the positions you have, well you can just go there. Go to the download library uh, and uh, go into the employees in HR and you're going to find uh, job descriptions. So you can use those, you know, not, at least you've got something to start with and you can edit them and, and, and customize them, take uh, add tasks, remove tasks. But, you know, why, why, is, uh, why recreate the wheel? Um, number six is uh, now you're ready to post your job opening. And, you know, this is very important too, you know, because uh, sure you can go ahead and you can post on Facebook, Indeed, uh, you know, and many other places. Uh, but you also have to remember uh, that the type of ad that you write will attract certain type of people. So uh, just keep that in mind. You know, if you're getting poor applicants, it could be because of your ad. And it could be uh, where you place the ad. Uh, so, so just keep that in mind when, when you're ready to do that. Uh, number seven. Uh, you have to know which questions you can and cannot ask. Um, you definitely, when you're going through a, 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 an interview process of any, any type, uh, you have to be careful of the questions you ask. Uh, it could get you in some hot water, so uh, you know, know what those are. Again, I'm going to refer back to the janitorial store in my house cleaning biz. You know, we have a list of questions uh, that, that you can and cannot ask. So uh, go and check them out. They're in the down the library. And, uh, so number, uh, for step number eight, uh, now you're ready to interview and hire. Uh, again, um, when you get ready to do your interviews, 
you should have a pre uh, a, a list of questions that are already predetermined that you're going to ask the person. And again, the the whole thing about once you get to this this point of interviewing and hiring, uh, you should have an entire uh, hiring system in place anyway of how you're going to go about hiring people. Uh, you know, when you're placing that ad and how they're going to respond to the ad. Uh, you know, I've talked about this many times. You know, through many types, many videos, but you have to have that system in place. So, you know, take the time and develop your your system. You know, what is your hiring system from placing the ad? How you're going to grade people? How are, how are they going to be vetted? You know, and how do you, how do you qualify them so they can move on to the next uh, process? Because you're not just going to go and invite everybody to do an interview. Uh, that'd be really foolish and wasting your time. Uh, you only want to let people, let candidates get to that level that are actually worth interviewing. So keep that in mind. So then uh, number nine, uh, step nine, is uh, orientation and paperwork. So here you've done your interview, you've gone through your hiring process, you offer the position, they've accepted. So now you got to do all the paperwork. And, uh, you know, with your employer, uh, with your employee, then, you know, you're going to have to fill out the W-499. Uh, and what you can do is you can always go to the IRS website to, for the forms. Uh, that's where you'll find them. Um, step number 10. Um, uh, you have to report each new employee to your state's new hire reporting agency. Now, this is something that you have to do. It's mandatory. Uh, you know, all employers are required to report new hires and rehire employees to their state uh, directly within 20 days of uh, hiring. So. Uh, make sure that you do that. Uh, again, you don't want to get in hot water because you didn't because you haven't done those things. Step number eleven. Now, whenever you hire employees, uh, you're going to have uh, federal and state posters that you need to post. Uh, typically, like in a break room or a, a common area where uh, where uh, people would be coming to your office, um, and it's uh, so people uh, have the right to, to view those and read them if they like, and. Um, so a lot of times what you can do is you can go online and, and get them posters. There's even there's uh, there's some services that will actually send you out a laminated poster. Uh, you know the one I have is a, a you know probably a, a two feet by uh, by a foot and a half or so something like that. But uh, uh, and I actually get them from our HR department. So they just uh, take care of that for me and they send them to me each year and then uh, I just post them in the appropriate place. But uh, keep that in mind. You have to do that. So you have to, you know, you have to post the, the proper uh, required posters and, and notices. Uh, and number twelve, you have to adopt a workplace safety program. Uh, you know, you have to. Uh, it, it's it's one of those requirements that you you have to uh, offer the offer that training to your employees. Besides, uh, remember we were talking about workman's comp. We want to make sure that. We're training our employees and training them on how to perform their work safely so they don't get injured. Because if they get injured, that's going to cost us money. You know, so that means you're going to have to work, file a workman's comp claim. And, uh, you know, then that means that your, your uh, workman's comp uh, premiums could go higher uh, because of accidents you've had. Uh, it affects your experience rating. Uh, so it's a lot of things. So that's why it's very, very important to make sure that you have a safety program in place and that's part of your orientation when you hire a new employee that you actually go through your, your safety training. And then at least once a year, you know, have a, a fresher, refresher course with all employees. And uh, even throughout the year, you can do, you can do multiple little uh, trainings, you know, to help them and remind them about uh, working safely. So, you know, sometimes you might be uh, doing a walkthrough through a facility or, or cleaning a home and you'll notice that one of your employees is in, uh, wearing their safety glasses when they should be because they're spraying chemicals. Well, that'd be a good uh, time to uh, have a teaching point, or teaching point with them uh, and just remind them why they need uh, or why they should be wearing their safety glasses. Um, so whenever you have an opportunity like that, you know, take it uh, because it's, it's so valuable. Uh, like I say, the, the key to that is that you want to have it to where you have no accidents uh, so that uh, your experience rating uh, is as low as possible, meaning that you're going to pay less for your workman's comp and, uh, and uh, you know, actually other costs too. But uh, so there you have it. You got, uh, you got 12 steps there uh, that you would take to hire a new employee. And if you follow them steps, you shouldn't have any issues.
And like I say, with uh, some of these here, uh, it's just a matter of going to the IRS website or, or the State uh, uh, Department of Labor uh, website. And that's where you can get some forms, additional information, things that you know or that you need. Uh, so it's not a big deal. So, uh, you know, it may be scary at first, but uh, you go through it the first time and you document and you process. Uh, so you have a system. Remember, I'm always talking about systems. Uh, so if you do that, now the, the next one, your second employee is going to be much easier, the third, fourth, fifth. And, uh, you know, by the time uh, you, you get to where you're hiring your 50th employee, this is just, uh, you know, a, a, a simple process that you go through uh, to do so. And maybe at that time you, you probably have somebody else in your office that's actually, uh, uh, you know, onboarding these people. So, well, hopefully you found this helpful. And if you have, go ahead and click on the like and share button. And as usual, if you uh, have not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please go ahead and do and uh, click on the subscribe button. Uh, we have hundreds of videos on how to build a successful cleaning business. So until next time, we'll see you.